What's up and good morning. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to go take a look at uh, another truck. You know, I, I realize not everybody, you know, in the world is wanting to build some cra big, crazy, lifted, SEMA show worthy truck. A lot of you guys are trying to build a practical truck or, you know, just want something that is going to make the truck look better and doesn't cost a million dollars because, you know, we don't all have a ton of money to spend on something like that. So today's going to be another one of those weird Tinder date kind of things. We're meeting up with a dude that I've talked with over Instagram for quite a while and he's actually a really cool dude. He's local and we've kind of talked trucks for the while and he ended up buying an L5P and doing some modifications to it right away. So he wanted us to come up, check it out, and we'll kind of give you guys another rundown of another setup you guys can run on your truck that is really a lot more practical than what I'm running. So let's hop in the old 7.3 here because as you know the uh, Denali build the BBB is still up at Bulletproof so this is uh this is the daily for now so let's roll up there all right so we just rolled up looks like we got the old L5P right there what's up bro what's going on welcome to the farms <laughs> what's going on man how you doing brother good, good to meet you. you you too I like the hat thanks man work for it there you go I also like the shirt what do we got a little, a little sweet and a little spicy yeah Clever. Got to have clever. the barbecue stuff going. There you go. So, yep. Welcome shout out, to uh, uh, shout out your Instagram name because I know you're all about trucks and barbecuing. Yeah, it's uh, it's Duramax uh, underscore barbecue. We'll put it right here for you guys. Yep. So the, re the reason we came all the way out here to the old farm is, uh, as you guys know, I've been looking to get some goats lately, and even though I do live where there's an HOA in a spot that does not really enjoy livestock, I'm really thinking about trying to make this work. And, you know, I really do want to come hang out with some goats. And so this just whole meeting happened to work out to where they got some goats out here and they got a sweet dog. That's Flint. Of course, never passes up an opportunity to come hang out with some animals and trucks. It's probably a couple weeks old. Gotcha. Oh my God, we got a horse. Are you a friendly horse? Are you a talking horse? Hey, yo. Oh God, what's up, little goats? What's up, goats? Come here, you guys shy? Oh my god, they're so small. I have to do my rounds at night. Mm -hmm. And. Oh. Get this naked one. What's the trick? Just commit. Yep. These ones are do it. big. You gotta be quick. I got one! I got one! <laughs> I don't know if this qualifies as a chicken because it's so small, but. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. There you go. Here. Sit on my finger. Oh, then, here, I'll get the other one over here. This one. Little Harold. Hello, Harold. This one's standing on your finger? Uh huh. That's badass. He's the show rooster. He's the show rooster? Mm -hmm. You're very pretty, Harold. Or handsome. All right, so now that we're done playing uh, Dr. Doolittle and uh, It's a Farm Life, <laughs> but it was pretty sweet back there. So I don't know if we could, I don't know if we can say you were actually supposed to buy Nick's truck. Yeah, American Duramax. I don't know what happened, but obviously he got scared. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you guys know Nick, American Duramax, he's the one that we went up to uh, get Chris's lift kit from, and really hooks us all up on parts and all that stuff. But I think he just decided he wanted to hang on to that truck because. I don't know if you know, but it's under the knife again. So it he's is. gonna be doing some more work. That guy's gone through about 10 different lift kits and probably like 20 wheel and tire setups. <laughs> so if you ever wanna know anything, you hit that guy up because he's tried it all firsthand. So he's really good for uh, any kind of wealth of knowledge that you need. So anyway, he was gonna buy that truck, but obviously that fell through. And so he hit me up, he's like, dude, I think I'm gonna have to buy an L5P. Now, as you all know, L5Ps are not tunable yet. yet. Here comes 400 <laughs> comments, I already see them. But Anyway, so he kind of hit me up. He's like, dude, I just got to do it. I got to bite the bullet. I need a new truck, and, and this is the route I want to go. So here you go, bro. Tell us about, what year is it? It's uh, 2018. So I, uh, I looked at LMLs. I couldn't find anything that was remotely clean or what I was looking for. You went through it trying to find one yep. you know, for, for your new build. Uh, so I, I looked at all the dealers around San Diego, LA, couldn't find anything. Uh, finally found this up in Escondido and uh, got the right deal that I was looking for. And uh, I lasted about two weeks keeping it stock. Uh, I'm terrible at that. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up, uh, after talking to everybody, I went with the three to six inch CST lift. 
Um, my experience with GM front ends is you have to do the kryptonite tie rods. Uh, and I did the idler and uh, Pittman arm uh, brackets. So the front end is basically taken care of. Give uh, us a little walk through the front end. Yeah. Just so, so people that don't know what parts you're talking about. Yeah, so if you can get the camera in there, there's the tie rods. And then the uh, three to six inch CST kit, you keep the A-arms uh, in a good location. The torsion stay in the factory location so they don't hang down like on some of the trucks that are out there. Um, it rides amazing. So everything he just mentioned is the reason it rides amazing. Yeah. You're keeping factory geometry and you're keeping pretty much everything the way the engineers designed it to ride right, you're just dropping it down. Exactly, so the new spindles, uh, we went with Bilstein shocks. Um, one of the things that I was under the impression was Fox designs their shocks more for just the length of the vehicle where Bilstein is actually going to gauge it for the specific vehicle that it's going on. So they're going to be thinking about things like weight distribution. Um, so we went with that. So that's a good thing to know because you guys know I'm a Fox shock fan. Chris is running Fox shocks. Eddie's running Fox shocks. <laughs> Nick's running Fox shocks. So none of us have experience with the Bilsteins. So this guy's gonna be your guy, because I know a lot of people say, well, why don't you go Bill Scenes? And to me, the reason I really go Fox is number one, they're local. Yeah. And I say like you can go get serviced shocks real quick, but now there's a huge delay on that. But they are local, and to me, they're just the best looking shock. So some of us build our shit to look good. <laughs> some of us want practicality, and that's kind of why I brought you guys here today to check out this truck is because this is probably more of the setup most people are gonna wanna go with. Or when somebody thinks about lifting their truck, they think more about this setup, not the crazy chaotic shit that I'm doing. <laughs> so this is gonna be a, a good all around lift kit, but still quality, because you guys know Eddie's running the CST. He's running the same kit, right? Yeah, he's set at about five inches, and this is about three and a half to four. Okay, and you're running what, 35s? I went with the Toyo 35 12.5. Uh, I want it to be a little bit different than what everybody's doing, so I stuck to a 17 inch wheel. Uh, so had to go with the Method NV HDs. Um, very, very happy with the wheel. Uh, went with the chrome lug nuts to give it a nice offset. Um, I'm keeping the handles and the mirrors chrome. Uh, eventually going to wrap the, the door sills black uh, right underneath the window. Um, I think I that'll... I out on my Silverado. These came black on mine. Okay. And everybody always asks me how I got them black. And I don't know what determines I why think the they older come... ones had it. Yeah, it was weird. I think it was the 15s came with it and then the yeah. 15 and a half. Another reason of like yeah. why they made the 15 and a half change. And from the, the LTs have it. Yeah, which is weird because mine was an LTZ Z71, which is fully loaded. And it came with... The black, which the as you guys know, like the black door handles and all that, that comes on the LT, the LT or the work truck edition, like just the bottom of the bones, black plastic. We ended up, uh, I ended up leaving the back stock at first. Um, got to talking to some friends and decided that we were gonna do a two inch lowering shackle in the back. Uh, got the truck back and it rides completely different. So for anybody that has these trucks, um, having them level is really nice, but the weight distribution change uh, just by having the back end at about two inches lower, it rides completely different. It, I, it kind of floats down the road. Gotcha. Uh, so I was very, very happy with that. And we did the Bilstein 5100s in the back as well. Um, so that I think turned out very, very good. The truck sits a little bit higher in the front than the back, um, which being from Southern California, that's a lot of the look that we go for. Cali um, lift. Yeah, a little not, bit of a Cali lift. Not the same as, not the, as Carolina the Carolina squat. <laughs> so hopefully uh, the deletes will come and the tank can fall off uh, on a rock. Allegedly. That would be wonderful. Uh, are these the same wheels that Chris is running? Those are the same wheels that Chris is running. Okay. I think Chris has 18s though. And he went with the bronze. Right, so as you guys have seen Chris's wheels, number one, they look super sweet in the bronze, but I've always also loved them just in the pure black like this. Something about Method. Method did a really good job of making a wheel that has mass appeal, but doesn't look like a cheap mass appeal wheel. You know, like this actually looks like a cool, badass wheel. And they're not super expensive, right? I don't know what they're um, I, they, Yeah, they weren't that bad. These are actually one of my favorite, just off the shelf factory wheels are these methods. So the other things that I did that I thought really changed the look of the truck was we took the stickers off. We, uh, we took all the emblems off of the truck. Um, just, I think it gives it a much cleaner look. Um, we uh, did all the stuff off the tailgate, so the tailgate just has a very clean look to it. Um, and I just, I wanted to do something that was a little bit different than what everybody else is, is currently running on these trucks. And it's tough to do when you take a white Chevy and you do everything black on it to make it look different. But I spotted this truck from like 
way down that road over there because it stands out because there is just those little touches and those little details and like by keeping the chrome nobody keeps chrome anymore so those little bitty details and then tying in with your antenna that you got over here so a couple videos ago uh, i saw ryan did the uh, vms antenna and i thought it looked pretty cool uh, so i went with the black and chrome uh, the black and uh, chrome on the lug nuts with the wheels uh, doing the same thing with the doors and the mirrors. I just felt like it tied the truck in very well It's something that's a little bit different. It matches the the Silverado emblem on the front So it almost gives it a little bit of a factory type look. So the entire time I own a Chevy This is like probably my biggest Flaw in my own brain is you always want what you want what you don't have, right? So I bought the Chevy. I didn't like these front ends when they first came out. Then I saw one lifted. I loved it So I bought one then the GMCs come out and I start to see those lifted and it's just the bigger open grill. And I'm like, man, there's just something really classy I like about those trucks. So I'm like, all right, so the next truck, I'm gonna try a GMC. And then now I buy a GMC, I'm like, man, I really miss this front end. Cause there's just something about the split grill, just the, the split headlights. I don't know, there's just this just screams more, I don't know if work truck's the right way to put it, but more truck truck. That makes no sense, but there's just something about it. Yeah, there's just something about this front end that I've always loved. And like, every time I see one now, I'm like, did I make a mistake by going GMC? <laughs> now that being said, it is a little late to turn back other than like all those parts will go back onto a Chevy if I ever change my mind. But I don't know, there's just something I like about it. And then it's the little details when you're building a truck. If you're gonna keep the chrome, tying the chrome in with the lug nuts, with the antenna, that kind of stuff, that's what's gonna set a truck off and make it stand out more than just the basic guy that goes and bolts on a lift kit, all black, black everything, whatever. It's, those little details is kind of what I try and tell you guys in my build. It's that shit that's gonna really set you apart. And as you can tell, you know, this is a white lifted Chevy. How many white lifted Chevys do we see? A million. I owned one. But this one just stands out. There's just something really cool about it. And that's kind of why I wanted to come up here. And of course, the beautiful L5P hood, which as you guys know, Dirty Max Jack put on his. And I still, why I'm like the, the guy that gets those messages, I don't know. <laughs> but I get messages from everybody saying, Hey, did Jack buy an L5P or did Jack did Jack delete his L5P? No, so Jack put an L5P hood on his 2015 Chevy, which part of me is contemplating, but I'm also in that boat that like, I don't know that I like to put parts on it that didn't come with it. I'm probably gonna regret that I've said that on camera because I'm probably <laughs> gonna end up with an L5P hood at some point, but it definitely uh, it's definitely a cool little design feature that Chevy did for the L5P. So hopefully these things can get deleted at some point allegedly maybe in Mexico we don't know I think probably my next upgrade is I really want to get the orange out of the headlights and out of the mirrors uh, probably gonna go with uh, some smoke lenses uh, I think that's really just gonna give the truck a little bit extra cleaner of a look oh yeah absolutely. Um, and then I did the LED headlights uh, I do a lot of driving do a lot of driving at night so that helps me definitely see better than the, the factory headlights that why they still come lack. halogen I have absolutely no idea they put projector housings in there which to me, projection housing, HID. Like it should be a standard thing. And now that's 2018, it should be LED. But for some reason they put the projection housing and the they- The 1500s do. They come up with, the, with the LEDs? The 1500s have LEDs. They, they couldn't do it on our 2500s. Why do we get screwed by buying <laughs> the most expensive truck they sell and we always get screwed from GM? Here comes 500 Ford comments. Get ready, <laughs> get ready. I've been through a lot of different vehicles. Uh, I've had an 06 LBZ. That, that truck was pretty nice, it was red. Um, I've had the half tons and uh, it was just time to get back in a diesel. There's just no other way to live, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> won't go back. I'm guessing you the entire time you owned a gas truck, you regretted it. When I'm on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So one thing that I do preach is like, there's the old saying like, don't go broke trying to look rich. And Instagram's like a huge curator of that, right? Because <laughs> you could spend hours, that was a bee that just flew by, I almost died. Uh, you could spend hours looking at people that have either more money than you or are willing to burn more money than you. Like, I'm sure there's plenty of people that have taken out mortgages against their double wide to buy American Force wheels. And it becomes like this big, like, world that can easily uh, overtake you. And at that point, you end up spending a lot of stupid money that you shouldn't have spent on a vehicle. Don't do that. <laughs> You can get a really badass looking truck without going fucking crazy over the top. It's not, it's not worth it. I mean, depending on your plans and depending like, you know, for fuck's sakes, if you're Warren Buffett, spend all the money you want on a truck. But you gotta be smart about it. I mean, can we say what you do for a living? 
Yeah, I'm a financial advisor. There you uh, go. I've been with my company for 17 years and um, started in high school. And I've learned through the work for it that, you know, if you want something, you have to go after it. Um, live for today, plan for tomorrow. You know, the truck could be gone tomorrow. And, you know, the, the important thing is family and friends and, and hanging out with good people and just being a good person. I, I think that's absolutely that's everything. But keep in mind, key into that first statement he said. I see a lot of these people saying YOLO. You know, you only live once, spend it now while you got it. You can't take it with you. A lot of people get old, you know? We live in a society now where we don't die off at 25 years old. I mean, some of us do. If you want to live that reckless of a lifestyle, then by all means, die off at 25. But I want to get to where I'm in my 50s, 60s, living very comfortably and not having to worry about making payments on stuff or, you know, am I going to be able to make enough money to, to you know, working as a greeter at Walmart to, to make these bills. I want to be able to where to be comfortable so you know if you've got the extra money spend a little bit on yourself spend a little bit you know you got to live but at the same time make sure there's always that nest egg saved up because shit could hit the fan we've experienced that <laughs> shit could hit the fan real hard real fast and you got to be able to carry your own ass because there ain't no fucking gofundmes going on on this channel there ain't no you know fundraising because we're out stuff you know we carry our own weight and, and that's what's important is you got to be able to take care of yourself because you know when the time comes and something happens you're really all you got this is going to be a truck that it's probably going to be in the realm of most people this is what most people are going to want this is what most people are comfortable spending the money on so to me if i were to make a, a, a daily driver comfortable truck this is like one of the ideal setups would you mind if we take it for a spin sweet love it let's go let's do it all right <clears throat> So we were just talking about the air-conditioned seats because as you guys know, 15 and a half, I think, is the last year for the air-conditioned seats. In 16, they switched over to ventilated seats. And he was just saying that the AC seats didn't work worth a damn. The ventilated worked better. Now to me, I haven't really used the ventilated enough, but the AC seats worked. But you would notice if you had the AC on in the truck, it took away from the AC on the seat for some weird reason considering they had like their own unit on the back of the seat and they pumped out hot air in the back. So one side would pump out hot air to whoever's in the back seat, they got screwed and they had to deal with hot air everywhere. But really you, all you need is ventilated seats. As long as the cab's cool, which it's gonna be because you're turning the air on, it's pumping up the air that's in the cab through the seats. So it's really the same thing. It just eliminates one more expensive piece to break. So there is a TSB online for the 15 Silverados and GMCs they can take the back uh, cover off and they can reroute the vents down to the bottom and they'll do it usually under warranty. And just convert it to a ventilated seat? Yeah, That's I had that done on mine. Really? And it, it made a huge difference. That's good to know. That's good to know. Sweet, all right, well let's take this thing. Dang, we're about to crest 6,000 miles right now. It's gonna do it with you. Yeah. 5996. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks buddy. <laughs> I don't know, you're catching up to Chris pretty quick. You can definitely tell it sits lower in the rear. I haven't been in a truck like this since about 2001. <laughs> it's kind of cool, but it also, there is a uh, little bit of a visual impairment on the front over there, especially oh. having the L5P hood. It already makes it worse. But it's more comfortable to sit because you're kind of reclined a little bit. These seats you can't beat in the Chevys. It actually is very smooth. Not bad, right? I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how smooth this is. We'll go, we'll slow down a little bit and then we'll get on it. Alright. Oh yeah. You can feel that pull is way harder. Definitely. Oh yeah. Now these trucks really are amazing. And I'm, I can only imagine once the tunes and deletes are available, what kind of monsters these trucks are going to be. So. I'm sure once that happens, you know, you talk about going on Instagram and being jealous. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be me once the tunes are available for these things. So what would you say this truck with the lift versus your LML factory as far as power? As far as power, I'd say they're at least the same. Okay. At least the same. Um, if not, yours felt like it pulled more back there yeah. than mine does off of the line. So right there, like that's a road drop off right there. Yeah. And you barely feel, same with the rear. Now it's hard to find trucks like this lifted at all to where the rear just rides 
anywhere remotely decent. It's just not, it's not a thing. You're always gonna get a rough ride in the rear unless you have weight in it, that's how these trucks are designed. But in doing the setup that you did, it actually feels like the rear is pretty freaking plush. Yeah, it, it seems to me like it more floats with the weight distribution. Right, so again, what did you do in the rear? Uh, it's a two inch uh, drop shackle. Okay. And then that was it. And then we did the Bill Steam 5100s. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, this thing was sweet. Oh, and we didn't hit. I'm gonna save 6,000 miles for you, buddy. That was nice of you. We're I gonna let you. Yeah. yeah. You, you can you can take that milestone. All right. So there you guys go. We just checked out Ryan's setup here, and I know it's gonna get confusing. There's a lot of Ryans on this channel. It seems like number one, everybody's named Ryan, but I hang out with a lot of Ryans. So. Yeah, good luck trying to keep track of all of us. There's too many of us. <laughs> but we're all strikingly good looking people. You know, it's just a, it just comes with the name. Um, but anyway, so we just drove Ryan's truck. But you know, I really wanted to take you guys out here to see this setup. Because like I said, it's 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 gonna be a more common setup. You know, it's gonna be a setup that probably you guys are more looking to do to your truck. Alright, so yeah, so we're gonna wrap up this video and you know I think Ryan's watched enough videos that he can handle it from here. Cause you know, the new guys always gotta kinda take the, the end of the video into their reins. And as we're getting more into these videos and as the channel's growing, I'm, I'm feeling more confident just handing it over to people. So with that buddy, I'm gonna let you take this away. I'm gonna walk out, I'm gonna walk out. One of the biggest things for me is supporting small businesses. Uh, Ryan, as you know, is uh, owns Work Ford Apparel. Um, I've bought multiple things from the website. Usually ships out within a day or two and living uh, not too far from him. Everything always comes pretty quick. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and if you want, leave a comment on what the next upgrade should be. Roll the outro. Damn.